All right, guys, here we go with week two of the 2023 Every Bit Counts Challenge. I have a feeling in the 2022 video, I called it the, the pantry challenge, but maybe I corrected myself. I'm having a deja vu moment, but this one's a little bit longer, so I'm gonna try not to interrupt too much, although that is against my nature. <laughs> so let's enjoy this together. Again, I'm gonna be taking notes and uh, we'll see how we do. It's the end of week two, and we just finished harvesting this little bit of blueberries from our patch because it's still producing a bit, but every bit counts. Well, week two has been quite productive, although maybe a little bit repetitious, uh, but I still feel we managed to get a lot done and a lot put away for the winter. Well, this week, you're going to see a few things that are a little different for the every bit counts challenge, where they're kind of just harvests, like what we're doing today which is harvesting some dry peas. So these are our Amish snap peas, which uh, we did get some off them, but uh, for the most part, they got too woody too quick, mostly because we had a pretty dry spring. So when they otherwise would have been optimal, they weren't, but they are still going to make a great dry pea crop. So we are going to get them off. So one thing about this is as part of the challenge, we're putting things away. And in most cases we have to preserve them. But in the case of the peas, this is the time of year when essentially, as long as we pick them on the right day, they've already been preserved. And that's important because uh, it basically has to be done now because we're getting rain in the next few days. The blackberries from last week out of the freezer because we went and picked more blackberries. So we need to do this all over again. It's blackberry season and they are thick. As I mentioned in week one of 2023, I needed to go back and check on the blackberries because so many of our berries were early this year, but I went back and had a look and they haven't even started to turn yet. So that's fantastic because at least that means we'll have them in August to be uh, tucking away for the Every Bit Counts Challenge. The plants are absolutely loaded though, so I have a feeling we're going to be getting a lot of fruit from them, just like we did from our raspberries. Spoiler alert, on our raspberries this year, I think we got 64 pounds of raspberries already and there's still a few trickling in but mostly just for fresh eating now but that's a lot of raspberries put away and made into product this year is an incredible year for the blackberries now one thing i'm learning the first year that uh, we were here and i harvested the blackberries they were tiny and shriveled and i didn't realize it because i thought that was what the blackberry was and i hated them they tasted awful in my mind but this year as you can see on these plants the plump wonderful berries are so tasty and so great for making all those wonderful recipes that I can't resist getting more and more and more. We're going to have to open another freezer just for all the fruit and we're trying to get this harvested before that storm comes. <laughs> I think that's one thing about uh, storing food, preserving food, collecting food, growing food, all of the above is you tend to do a lot of the same things over and over and over again at certain periods of time. So you're going to notice some similarities between last week and this week because it's still berry season. I always feel so lucky when Chris is able to come help me and escape his uh, work duties. And very, very lucky that we are in this as a team and working together. It is so wonderful. But the one thing that I really, really like is how the videos become deeper when Chris gets in. He always has a philosophical look to it or the biologist look to it. And it just becomes a deeper meaning for why we're doing stuff. Not just to eat, but a deep meaning, right? I love it. I love when he gets in on the videos. And in the spirit of every little bit counts, couldn't resist harvesting some of these choke cherries because these are very ripe and uh, for choke cherries should actually be pretty tasty. We didn't make it. Every bit counts, but this is a little much. Well, and after harvesting all those dry peas, here's our box of dry peas. So we will come back to this later to actually shell them and whatnot because at the moment it's not a priority and they can certainly sit like this, which is why we put them in the uh, cardboard box because they will breathe a bit. I'm not even sure what day we're on anymore, but we are moving on. Uh, so far you've seen us, we've harvested our dry peas and then we did some berry picking and got completely poured on and rained out, but we still got those berries in the freezer. That's another big Ziploc bag in the freezer for over the winter months when uh, fruit isn't so plentiful. But that is not what we're up to now because we are getting full swing into processing some lamb meat out of the freezer because today is the arrival of three sheep that we got butchered. So we need to get that, uh, I believe it is a, 
about 175 pounds of lamb that we have to get into the freezer. It's so funny for things to be the same week to week, year after year. That is homestead life though. Things work in a schedule because you're eating and preserving as things grow, as things mature. And this time of August is when we always get sheep butchered. Well, my friends, Chris just arrived home with uh, the three lamb that are to go into the freezer. And I do not have enough space cleared out. That is a lot more meat than I was anticipating. So today we are basically canning lamb stewing meat. Uh, this is a great thing to use for curries, putting back into stews, soups, things like that. We even like it in like um, if you're doing a taco meat or something like that because it pulls apart so easily. If you throw it in the frying pan, it just shreds to little pieces and is wonderful. So what we're starting out with here is 10 pounds of stewing meat from the butcher, but I'm a little bit picky about my meat. I like it cut to a certain size. I like the fat removed, all those sorts of things. So first step for me is going to be cutting this up into what I want in my stewing meat, and then it'll go into the jars. This is such a simple recipe. It is pressure canning, but basically you don't need to sterilize your jars because you're pressure canning. You don't need to cook the meat because it's a raw pack. All we need to do is a little bit of salt in the jars and boiling some water, can it up, good to go. So let's get going. All right, so our meat is all caught up and ready to go. So now we're just going to get our jars and pack that in when we need to get our water to boil. And uh, as you can see here, I've got quite a big bowl of meat, but I also have a bowl of the scrap fat pieces and things like that. But don't worry, those are not going to waste. We're gonna render that down and put the lard into the freezer for use later. And then the rest is gonna to go to feed the lovely chickens because they so enjoy this kind of little treat. All right, we have our pressure canner on the oven. Uh, we've got it on a low kind of setting to get that water heated up in there. We've got three liters in and our lid is ready to go on with our oil. And we've checked the little nozzle to make sure that we can see through that. And the water is boiling. So without any further ado, we're gonna get this packed up. Basically what we're doing here is we are putting the meat in the jars. Wow, eh? Uh, you wanna pack this in as tightly as you kind of can. You want it to be pretty compacted in there. And then we add half a teaspoon of salt per pint jar. Now, if you were doing a quart jar, you would be a whole teaspoon, but we're doing a pint jar. Then the next step is to add a couple inches of water in the bottom of this that just gives something for the meat to kind of cook in and it helps move the heat throughout all the meat. Uh, I don't do a full jar of um, water. Uh, I don't fill it right up. I don't like that method. This is just what has kind of worked for me to make a nicer stewing meat. Now that we've got that done, we're going to put it into the canner and get the next couple jars done. All right, so we've got our stewing meat in the pressure canner. It's doing awesome, already up to pressure almost. And we have got most of the meat into the freezers. I did, however, remove 11 pounds of ground because tomorrow's project, we're making chili meat because it was not gonna fit. We also couldn't fit all the bones. I always keep forgetting to tell them, don't send all the bones. We don't need any more broth, but we're not gonna look a gift horse in the mouth. So we're going to get those roasting in the oven. We've got them in a cast iron pan to start melting or unthawing, I guess. And uh, we're gonna get those in the oven and roast them so that we can make lamb broth. And there we are, eight jars of our meat out of the canner. You can see there they are still just a bubbling away. That's one more thing out of the freezer and into the pantry. I like to actually do my chili with the meat separate from the beans. It just gives me more versatility. Uh, I find sometimes I want just the beans and sometimes I want just the meat for something else. So I do a basic recipe, which is meat, onions, garlic, chili powder and uh, tomatoes, which I actually don't have tomatoes right now, so I'm using tomato juice, and hot peppers, which I also don't have right now, so I'm using hot pepper uh, sauce that I canned last year when the peppers were ripe. So this is why it pays to have stuff that kind of makes it to the next canning season, because when stuff's not ready and you really want to get going anyways, it's great to use up that old stuff. So basically for this recipe here, as you can see, we're using 12 pounds of meat. We have five cups of onions, two liters of tomato juice. I am using one liter of stewed tomatoes just because I had them. 
and I am putting an extra pint jar of lamb broth in just for a little bit of flavor here. So basically the only other ingredients you're going to need here is cumin and salt. So one thing you definitely want to make sure you're doing as you cook this is removing excess fat. So if I pull this all off to this one side here, let me get a light, it will basically start accumulating down in the low spot and then I can take it out. Look at it accumulating. And basically I just scoop, run it through a little sieve, that way I can dump the meat portion back in. This is already my second jar out of this lamb. Lamb is definitely a meat you want to be doing this with. Excess fat can cause problems when you're trying to can it and getting a good seal. Basically, I'm going to fill this one. I'll have two jars taken out of here, and I think that will be adequate for us to start adding the rest of our ingredients. The nice thing is if I do taking this fat out before I add the rest of my ingredients, I can still use this uh, fat as a uh, cooking tool. Now, an interesting thing that somebody told me about last year in the uh, Every Bit Counts Challenge was when you do this, turn your jars upside down. Then that way you get the nice clean lard at the bottom of the jar and it's very easy to dump out all the sediment and icky stuff that you don't want in there. Honestly, that tip that I received from a subscriber about flipping over the jars for the lard is the best tip I have ever received in all of our time on YouTube. It is such a time saver keeps the lard so clean. I absolutely love it. I use it every time now. So thank you so much for that information. I really appreciate it. This is where I love having these tomato juices in the pantry for this time of year. So we're just going to get this back to boiling and then we're going to jar it up. Well, you can see we have eight nice sized jars in here. These are actually almost like a 750 milliliter, which is wonderful, but I've ended up with a ton left over because I didn't do the pint jars allowing me to stack them in there. So either we do another round or I freeze this. I'm not sure yet because as you know, space is a premium in our freezer. Uh, the other option is I make chili and we eat chili for a few days. Stay tuned to see what we decided. And here we have our chili meat out of the canner, bubbling away as you can see. All jars look good. We ended up with the eight jars that we've gone through the canner and the remainder of the jars are going in the fridge to make some chili over the next few days. All right, so next on our agenda is another lamb item. As you saw uh, yesterday, we were keeping out those bones from the meat that we got back from the butcher to make some lamb stock. And we have since roasted those bones. Uh, I roast them at 325 for about an hour and a half. They just really brings out the flavor and the fats and everything. And now we're going to scrape all of that, including all the wonderful fat uh, and lard type uh, product in there into our big pot. And we're going to add eight liters of water. We may add more to this as we go, because this has to simmer for eight hours. So it's going to cook down and I just keep adding. Uh, but basically let's get the bones into the water. And then we have uh, a few other ingredients to add. Uh, there is four onions, four pieces of celery or stalks of celery, and four carrots, as well as uh, a tablespoon of pepper and a tablespoon of salt is what I put in. Now we like our, uh, our, our stuff to be a little bit peppery. You may want to thin down that pepper a little tiny bit, but that's really up to you and your taste buds. But basically that is the recipe. And then we simmer this for eight hours before we strain everything out. And then we'll bring it back and go from there. We're also going to add some fresh rosemary and thyme out of the garden into this, just for a little bit of wonderful flavor. Well, we're almost at the end of week two and we're back picking berries because we got rained out and oh my goodness, let me show you how many berries there are now. Look at that. And try and fill that second container that we were hoping to fill last time. Oh my, look at this one, look at them all. Look at them all. Amazing. Well, it kind of looks like I should have brought another bucket. But 
it's evening and time to do chores and at least I got this bucket picked and I guess we'll be back tomorrow. Well, we're back in from berry collecting and it's time to get these berries in the freezer because I've got a lot of other things on the agenda for tomorrow and therefore they're not getting processed yet. So we're doing our textbook move of throw it in the freezer and deal with it later. But first we have to remove the berries that we harvested in the rain the other day so that we can get these ones in. But before we can do that, we need to weigh them. That's something that we do all the time. Anything that comes into the house gets weighed in order to keep track of how much we produce every year on the farm because it's just a fun thing to do. And there we have another tray of blackberries in the freezer for flash freezing. One thing that I do have to say is going amazing this year is fruit collection. We have had such an incredible berry year so far and I haven't tallied it up yet, but at the end of the Every Bit Counts Challenge on the last week, I'll give a tally of just how much fruit we've managed to harvest here on the homestead and put into the freezer because it's filling a freezer really, really quick, which is awesome because we are a huge fruit eating family. We love smoothies. We love uh, muffins with fruit in them, things like that if we, have, if we make bread type product. Uh, but mostly we just eat a lot of fruit, fruit and yogurt, fruit with granola. So fruit is essential for us to make it through the winter. Well, we are back. It is the next day and we are going to be jarring up this lamb broth now. Uh, one thing that uh, I kind of didn't film it last night, but basically what happened is after eight hours of uh, simmering, I strained everything out of it except for the liquid and basically have put it into the fridge overnight. And this morning, what we have now is a gorgeous layer of the fat that has come to the top, which will be easy to remove before we process this lamb broth in the pressure canner. So the steps now, we're going to take this off. I'm actually gonna jar it because uh, what I will do is use this later on for cooking, uh, that sort of thing as a kind of oil or butter replacement. There's nothing wrong with it, but it does have a bit of seasoning and flavor in it, obviously. So it's not nice for baking or that sort of thing, but if you're frying up potatoes or meat or anything like that, mm, works perfect. But we're gonna get this out of the pot and then get the pot back up to boiling can it or jar it I guess and then put it into the pressure canner and we'll be bringing you back as we go. Now as a little side note as the uh, lamb broth is heating up there is that fat that we had set aside that lard from the meat that we used for the chili and as you can see it did settle on the bottom nice and solid so now we're going to remove that liquid from the top because I should be able to combine these all into one gorgeous jar. And there we have it, nicely sitting where it needs to be. The wonderful thing about lamb broth, or any broth for that matter, is that it doesn't have to pressure can for very long. I did quart jars and they only need 25 minutes, pint jars 20, so that saves a lot of time when it comes to canning. Well, we're back doing rabbits again. This week we butchered five rabbits to put into the freezer for future meals, and we've done them the same way we did last week as the pulled rabbit. And I'm not going to bore you with all the details. We'll just kind of put in a few little pictures here. But uh, this is definitely our favorite way to use the rabbit. And it also saves a lot of space in the freezer, which is very important at this point in our homestead uh, preservation. And there you have it. This is the end of week two. Looking forward to what we can get put away next week. Wow, I love seeing all of those jars spread out on the table at the end there. Mm, that does make me so happy when that kind of situation arises where I know I've had a good productive week and I'm really really hoping to see some of those through uh, August. I will admit that right now we are in a bit of a lull on the homestead which is wonderful. Stuff isn't really ready to go into jars yet. It's not even really ready to be picked. We're going through berry season and we kind of have that little break, which I am looking forward to because it gives me time to get things tidied up around the yard. We're going to even maybe do a little trip with the family. We'll see how that goes. But I am looking forward to the beginning of August and getting into this full swing for the 2024 season. Stay tuned next week for uh, week three of the 2022 and 2023 Every Bit Counts.